What was your first impression of Elizabeth? She was always so friendly and talkative. And I was walking down the hallway one day, and she said, can I ask you a question? Will you be my friend? And I was like, like, it kind of took me back for a second. And I was like, yeah, I'll be your friend. And she was like, oh, OK. And like, she was so happy about it. Like, she went and told everybody, like, Jessica's going to be my friend. And her eagerness was amazing. I could see that. It's like getting to you as you talk about it. Yeah, just because I know it'll never happen again. What were you when you first learned that Elizabeth was reported missing? We got a call from her counselor, and she was like, well, we're just having a couple issues trying to locate her. Were you concerned? I was a little concerned just because of how innocent she was. She trusted anybody and everybody. Everyone in Elizabeth's circle, including Cindy Swanger, another support coach at LifeWorks, frantically tried to reach her. What happened when you called her? I had been looking, calling, texting, asking neighbors. Did you call the police? The reason I did not call the police, because Elizabeth being Elizabeth, if she was afraid of something, she would call the police and say she smells pot burning. They would come over. There'd be no pot smell whatsoever. With Elizabeth suffering from mental health issues, it's not unusual to have delusions. And these can be very frightening, and for her, real. It's sad the police would discount someone so vulnerable instead of figuring out ways to support her. So you felt like because police had already had these experiences of false alarms, if you called them, they wouldn't believe you anyway? Yes. My community, just like you were taught, they said if you call the police, you better have a good reason because they may come and think that you're a threat when you're the one in need of help. Yes. And I've had other experiences with some police officers that they did not believe me. And to be honest, i rather rely on my dog. I'm on my way to meet Stacy's son, Corey. Corey was one of the family members who had last spoken to Stacy just before she'd gone missing. What was mom like? Well, well where do I start? Uh... <laughs> She'd do anything for anybody. God, look what he's done to my thing. <laughs> She would, she'd give you the shirt off her back if you needed it. She was in a healthcare field, and she would take pictures with her residents on their birthdays, and she'd take them in cake. And she just was a very loving person. Or was, uh, was dad in the picture? No. She met another guy, and he started drinking quite a bit. She did struggle a little bit with drug use, but um, she did her best with the hands she had been dealt. At the end of the day, she was still my mom, yeah. and she still loved and care just as much as anybody else does in this world. The night Stacy went missing, she had been sober for over a year. We were supposed to meet up with my brother and my aunt Gina. Gina is Stacy's older sister, but only by 11 months. The two were inseparable, but this one night changed everything. We were all at Applebee's eating dinner, and she was actually supposed to go with us. And we were at dinner, and when we got a phone call, that she had a flat tire. With their mother now missing for more than 72 hours, Stacy's sons didn't want to wait for police to step up. I felt like the police weren't doing enough for us to justify letting them to try to figure it out. So we took it upon ourselves. At that point, I didn't know so many stuff there in the trunk. So the next thing we did, we opened the trunk. He opens the trunk up, looks in there, nothing. What does this mean for your search for your mom at this point? At this point, my brother was able to just kind of walk by the car, and he opens the car door. He's looking inside the vehicle here, and he finds my mom's ID. Wh where was the ID? He's in the car like this. The ID was right here, down between the passenger seat. What was it about seeing her ID caught your attention? It was just weird that it was on the floor. So somebody had to go through that, the, the wallet, pull all of her stuff out of that, just to find something in her wallet, money. 
whatever the case may have been, what they were looking for, you know. <laughs> he comes back up to the front of the car, and I'm sitting back, and I'm like, Kurt, the seats move all the way back. So my mom was only about five, six. She couldn't have touched the pedals in that car. You got to find out who this person is. That's, that's, that's what it was.